You see here the bio applications, which are built in as a standard in, in the instrument. All these applications, by the way, can of course be modified and adapted to suit your needs. Here is, for example, the first one, a method which we will see later on. I will perform measurements using this method to determine the purity and the concentration of nucleic acids, followed by a method for protein assays according to the Bradford method. Then we have a method to perform protein concentration determinations by calculation from the absorbances at two different wavelengths, for example, 280 and 340 nanometers. Then we have a method to determine the total protein content in biological samples according to Lowry. Then we have a method for the quantification of the total protein concentra concentration in biological samples with the BC assay. And finally, we have a method to determine the total protein in biological samples with the Buret assay. The instrument, of course, has many other advanced features built in, as for example, just to illustrate that a fully fledged user management, which is built in, every user has its a password and so on, login date and so on. So this is only an example of the many features built into this instrument. The UE5 nanospectrophotometer actually combines two instruments in one. You see here that we have on one side a measuring channel to perform measurements with standard cuvettes, one centimeter cuvettes, and the second measuring channel, a so-called microvolume platform, which allows to perform measurements with very small sample quantities of approximately one to five microliters only. Why do we need this microvolume channel in uh, life science applications? In life science applications, mainly when performing measurements of DNA solutions, the samples normally are highly concentrated. And in order to avoid that those samples have to be diluted prior to measurement, we can measure them at very short path lengths. This microvolume platform can perform measurements at two different path lengths, at one millimeter path lengths and at 0.1 millimeter path lengths. And the path length itself can even be selected automatically according to the concentration of the sample being measured. Let's have a quick look how this automatic path length, path length adjustment works. You see in this animation that the light during a measurement comes from below. It passes through the sample is reflected by a mirror on top of the sample and from there reflect, reflected back to the sample and then guided to the detector of the instrument. And as you can see in the animation, the path length automatically adjusts to the concentration of the sample being measured. I will conclude this brief introduction to the UV5 nanometer with a short practical demonstration. I have prepared DNA solutions and we will measure the concentration and the purity of these DNA samples. The, the sample you see here and as a blank in the measurement I will simply use pure water. But let's first have a look at the theoretical background, how such a determination works and how the results are calculated. You can see here the absorption curves of nucle nucleic acids and proteins. Normally, if a nucleic acid contains impurities, those impurities are normally proteins. And as you can see in these graphs, 
the proteins have an absorbance maximum at 280 nanometers, whereas the nucleic acid has its absorption maximum at 260 nanometers. This makes it possible to determine the purity of nucleic acid solutions by measuring the absorbance at the two wavelengths and then by calculating the ratio of the two absorbances. If the ratio between the nucleic acid and the protein absorbance is higher than 1.8, we can say that the nucleic acid basically does not contain any proteins. When it comes to the concentration, as we have seen, the nucleic acid have a concentration, have an absorbance maximum at 260 nanometers. So, in order to calculate the concentration, we can divide the absorbance measured at 260 nanometers by 0.02 and by the path length. And as I have mentioned, the instrument can select the path length itself, so the path length here will be entered into the formula automatically. In the next step, I will show you how the corresponding measurement method is entered in order to perform the purity and the concentration determination of the nucleic acid. As I have told you, we will perform the measurements on the microvolume platform. We will automatically select the path length, so we will the instrument let do that, and we will perform a threefold determination in our measurements so that at the end we will have the mean value and the standard deviation of the measurements on the display of the instrument. Let's quickly have a look at the method, how the method is set up in the instrument. To enter the method, I click on Methods, Bio Applications, select the Nucleic Acid method, and in the first step, I store the method template under my own name so that I can modify it. So I will enter here as a method ID, for example, Nucleic Demo. I click on OK. OK, and now you can see a copy of the method has been created. In the configuration of the method, I just uh, show you that we will perform the, the measurement on the microvolume platform. We will let the instrument select the path length automatically, and we will do a multiple determination with a fixed number of samples. I go back. He did, I didn't have to change anything. In the blank, as I have told you, we will use water to determine the blank value. So I simply overtype that so that the instrument then will tell us that we have to put water onto the microvolume platform. I store that. In the measuring function, we see again microvolume platform measurement duration two seconds, which is fine. In the sample, as I have told you, we will perform a threefold measurement. I don't enter any sample ID for this uh, brief demo. And just to show you a little bit the calculation, how it's done, this is the form as we have seen before. The purity is the absorbance measured at 260 nanometers, as we have seen, by the one measured at 280 nanometers, according to the formula. And the other formula here, we have entered, this is already predefined, and the path length, as I've mentioned before, will automatically be entered by the instrument according to the path length which was used during the measurement. I will now save my method, and now I will create a shortcut on the screen. This will then allow me to start my method directly by clicking on a shortcut on the home screen of the instrument. So I click on start, I say add to home, I enter a description for it, let's say DSDNA, 
as an example. This is then the label for my shortcut. I click OK, I click Save, and now you see a shortcut has been created on the desktop of the instrument. And now we are ready to perform the measurement. You see here the shortcut I have created. I click on it. I start it. And now it says, please put the blank water onto the micro volume platform. So I pipe at five microliters of the water, distilled water, onto the micro volume platform. I close the arm. I confirm it OK. And now you see the blank measurement is performed at two different wavelengths, of course, because the instrument does not yet know at which wavelength, uh, with which path length the measurement then has to be performed. Now it asks me to put sample one onto the microvolume platform. I carefully dry the mirror and the microvolume platform with a lint-free tissue. I put another tip onto my pipette. I pipe at five microliters of the sample onto the microvolume platform. Close it. Confirm it. OK. The measurement is done. And we have told that we will perform a threefold measurement. So I confirm it. Next analysis. You see the purity is 1.8. This means that the DNA basically does not contain any proteins and the concentration is 1478 micrograms per milliliter. I go to next analysis. Now it tells me to put the second sample onto the microvolume platform. I wipe the previous sample away. I pipette another five microliters of the sample onto the microvolume platform. I close the arm, I confirm it OK, performs the second measurement, and as you can see, one measurement lasts approximately two seconds. Result, as you can see, is exactly the same as before. For the purity, I open the arm again, say next well measurement, wipe the previous sample away, I put the third one onto the microvolume platform. I close the arm, I confirm it OK, and the third measurement is done. Now you see, we have a slight deviation, now it's 1.9 the ratio, and then at the end, we can have the statistics, we can have the, them displayed by clicking on statistics, and as you can see here, the mean value for the concentration is 1,493 micrograms per milliliter. The standard, relative standard deviation for the concentration is 1.35%, and the mean value for the purity is 1.8, and the relative standard deviation is 3.149%. Okay, that's it. We have concluded our uh, brief introduction to the UV5 nano spectrophotometer, and now. Please feel free to ask questions if there should be any, and if we can measure, uh, manage to get the questions through with the audio devices we are using.